don't touch him. And whatever you do, don't look him in the eye. Those are the words my mother said to my future husband on the day he would learn firsthand to never look a wild animal in the eye. But I, too, that day would learn a very important life lesson. This is the true story of how I left Calgary 30 years ago, hence the cowboy boots, to follow my dreams in Vancouver. And not long into my time there, I met the man of my dreams, a handsome, rich dentist from Nova Scotia. <laughs> I fell in love at first sight, but not so much for him. So I had to really win him over because I wasn't his type, which was blonde with long legs and high heels. I was a brunette in flats. <laughs> I phoned my parents and I told them that I'd met this handsome dentist. And my dad said, well, what is he interested in? You know, you got to find some common ground. And then I remembered every time I talked about riding horses in Calgary, his eyes would light up like a Christmas tree. Aha, I had an inn. I played up my horseback riding adventures and my dad said, hey, why don't you invite him on a little camping trip? We'll meet you in the Rocky Mountains of Banff National Park. We'll bring our horses. You can lease a couple horses. And the four of us, well, we'll get to know each other and see if we can't win him over. So that's what we did. The four of us met in Banff National Park in August of 1983. And we rode horses and we started to get to know each other and I started to win him over. So after about three or four days, of horses, <laughs> we needed a little break. So the four of us went into the town of Banff. Now, most of you know out west, when you're in Banff and there's a big crowd, what is, what's usually going on? It's either a celebrity yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or a wild animal. Exactly. So right in our little walk, we come upon a big, huge crowd. Now, Randy knows it's going to be an animal, so he starts to push himself through the crowd. Uh, can you just hold my calls? I'll be done in a second. <laughs> so we go through the crowd, and Randy pushes his way to the front of the crowd. And my mom, who's a bit of a, an animal lover, gets right behind him. Now, my dad and I are not quite that close, but this is when I hear, don't touch him, Randy. And whatever you do, don't look him in the eye. Well, he's a man. Here's what he heard. I dare you to touch him, Randy. <laughs> and look him in the eye. Well, that must have been what he heard, because by the time I got to the front of the crowd, there is Randy with his hand on the shoulder of a full-sized male elk with 14-point antlers, posing for all the tourists. <laughs> that would have been okay, but the elk, well, the elk pit picked up his scent and started to do this. The elk stopped his grazing, lifted up his head, shot it around, and made direct eye contact with Randy. <laughs> the two of them, man and beast, are connecting. <laughs> now you would have thought one of them, I'm not going to name names, might have been smart enough at that point to get out of the way. <laughs> he wasn't really convinced that he should move until the elk lowered his antlers and charged him. Oh, Randy flew back, spun around, and started to run for his life, hurtling white picket fences throughout the little <laughs> The elk is in full pursuit of him, and my mother is screaming, <laughs> like that's going to help. <laughs> my father is yelling at me, because it's my fault that the elk is chasing Randy. <laughs> and Randy is running for his life. Now, fortunately, Randy is smart enough to get behind a big tree and break up the eye line of the elk. And the elk loses interest in him. He's gone, he can't see him, and he goes back to grazing as though nothing happened. Well, by the time we catch up to Randy, Randy is now hidden in someone's garage, <laughs> and we reunite. Randy has learned to never look a wild animal in the eye. <laughs> But it would be that night in our campground that I would learn my important life lesson. You would have thought the elk was finished with us. <laughs> but lying in our tent that night 
exhausted from the drama of the day, this is how I was wakened. Wake up, wake up, wake up, he's here. <laughs> <laughs> Who's here? The elk, he's here. He's followed me home. <laughs> you here. But now I'm awake and I look and projected on the side of the tent is the shadow of an enormous elk. And now that I'm awake I can hear him grazing beside our tent and its antlers are rubbing against the edge of our tent. It's not the same elk but it doesn't matter. It's an elk. And we're inside that tent. I'll unzip the zipper, Randy says. We'll run to your parents' trailer and we'll sleep there tonight. Good idea. Except the sound of the zipper <laughs> frightened the elk, <laughs> who in its fright lifted up its antlers and it caught our tent string. And now it is panicking and it's throwing its head back and forth, <laughs> trying to throw the tent off its antlers. <laughs> We are like two pieces of chicken in a shaken bake. <laughs> we fly out of the tent. We hit the ground. We race to my parents. We open up the door, which thankfully was open. We get inside. We're safe. And that is when I learned my lesson. When you're camping with your parents, great idea to wear pajamas. <laughs>